Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Time to get cranking on some Volvo stuff here. Next up on the Robert DIY tour. Got to take care of a few things on this S70. He thinks the water pipe may be leaking on the back of the engine. It's possible that the water pump is leaking. I believe he did a timing belt water pump job and wasn't able to clean the water pump area where it mounts to the block off sufficiently. So that may be where it's leaking. I'm going to try to get up under there. I'm going to try to get up under there and get a real close look to see if that pipe's actually leaking. If I can't tell, I'm going to pull the water pump, clean that stuff off real good, put a new water pump gasket on there, see if it stops leaking. If it's still leaking, then I'll pull that stuff off the back of the engine, turbo, uh, exhaust manifold, stuff like that. I just have almost never seen these water pipes leak unless they've been disturbed. So, I mean, it's possible, but if it's leaking right after you did a water pump, probably the water pump. So, let's dig into that, see what's going on there. That's the number one priority on this car. And then we got some other stuff that he'd like to get serviced on it. But this car was imported from Germany, military sales. He bought some of this stuff aftermarket. See, he's got the mesh grill, projector headlights. He's got custom wheels on there. He curved one. Tents needing to be replaced on it. Still look like he got plastic on the back seats. What in the world is going on there? And he's got the cutout for the rear bumper. So that's an interesting thing. So there it is. Picture of the rear of the car. And nautic blue. So he's got some white pinstripes on there. I'm not sure if that was on there when he bought it. Again, he had it imported from Germany. He was in the military over there. Bought it brand new. So he... Uh, Got some attachments to the car. Of course, in the garage, he's got, good Lord, 6.3 AMG Mercedes. Only one thing nice about having one of those is having two of those. So they got one that's a convertible, one that's the hard top. And, man... It amazes me how people can have a road machine like this, but they still like that for their daily driver. It, it blows my mind. That says a lot about Volvos. If somebody can get out of a $150,000 car and still drive their P80 Volvo, these P80s, man, it's an incredible daily plan. Let's get this in the garage and get started. Making sure we don't scratch one of these. Probably can't afford to do that. Timing belt replaced July 21. That thing there. Cabin filter, maybe not too long ago. The support brace, the bar is missing. I don't know where that is. There's nothing in the coolant reservoir. So I'm gonna pour some water in there. It'd probably be okay to run it for a minute without it but I'm not going to I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there PCV has some weird clamp on it there uh, looks like it may have an IPD tune on it maybe so let me go ahead and fill this up with distilled water crank it up get it in the garage and see we are from there I could do this out here but if it rains then I'll be messed up so I'm gonna go ahead and move it on the inside I was kind of surprise at the interior here it's got some I guess it's one of those press on wood kits that's pretty neat it looks good got that stuff pressed on the vents and 
He's got a different shift knob in here. Pretty neat looking dash here. And we may talk him into pulling this tin off of here, but man, even the seats are in great shape. The beloved S70. Look like the door check strap is messed up. And his under dash panel is missing for some reason. T5M, baby. And we're going to kick this off with a dead battery. Let's go ahead and jump it. Try to get it moved. We have the car in the garage. Far enough away for this Mercedes that I don't think we can nick that. Can't afford that. Broke the wheel lug nuts loose just in case we have to take them off. Got the car up and on a jack stand. Now the owner said that coolant was leaking over here before he did the water pump he thought it may have been the water pump so he changed the water pump and it progressively got worse so it's a good chance that water pipes leaking we're gonna get under there now and see if we can jam a tissue up there see if the tissue gets wet if so we're gonna start tearing this stuff apart and pull this exhaust manifold off pull that pipe out and get her done when this S70, the owner suspects that the crossover water pipe is leaking. This water pipe plugs into the engine, to the block. The block has a, a, a hump on it where the water pipe gets plugged into and the water pump is on the other side. The water pump pumps coolant through that pipe to the turbo, to your heater assembly and to your lower radiator hose. So now I guess it pulls water up through there and into the back of that uh, water pump. I don't know, it turns one way. I have never figured out if it's pumping it that way or if it's pulling it that way. Anyway, coolant's going through there. And where your pipe plugs into the back of the engine, he suspects it's leaking there. It was leaking, he thought it was a water pump, he changed the water pump, still leaking. He wasn't, in his mind, able to clean the surface of the block off where the water pump mates, so it, it still could be the water pump if he didn't clean it off good. Anyway, we're gonna get down under the car, put some light on it, maybe put a camera on it, see if we could tell if this water pipe is leaking. You can wrap uh, tissue paper around there, and if it gets wet, it's probably leaking so that's the best way I know to check for leaks or just look at it if it's you see water seeping through it is leaking pretty simple so let's get under here and see if it's leaking if it is leaking I'll make this video to show you how to replace that rubber seal it has an o-ring there but you got a lot of stuff to get out of the way to replace that pipe that does not leak off I think this is the gasket that goes around that water pipe seal then you got all this other stuff that goes in there too you got the water pipe connection on the back of the cylinder head you got the turbo uh, drain line gasket and seal not sure where these would go but you know you got a gasket kit water pipe o-ring kit all that stuff comes in there so it looks like they got three of the same gasket in there I don't know why you would need three of them. I think only one goes on there. This goes on the pipe that goes to the back of the head. Not sure where those go. And this goes on the turbo drain. I don't think you get that water pipe loose or off without pulling exhaust manifold. So we got exhaust manifold gaskets. And I think all this stuff came in this packet. It's got some other parts of things he would like to do possibly later. So we're just going to mosey right along. So let's get under here and see if we can see a leak. I have the car jacked up. It is supported by the jack stand. The jack, it doesn't have any weight on it. So the car is on the jack stand. I'm going to get under here and I think I'll be safe. But I don't have my ramps with me. You can pull this thing up on ramps and look at it with it on ramps before you dig into it. So let's dive in. So you come under the engine. Here's your axle, come under your axle, 
and there's that crossover pipe there. Now, right now, it looks bone dry to me. What's that? Where that pipe goes into the back of that engine. It's bone dry to you? Yeah. So you want to try the uh, just the water pump itself, the gasket itself? I think so. Okay. I try. I asked him to do that first because it would be the easiest. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that would be easier for me. But I don't see no leak, no evidence of leak, no old water residue. Mm -hmm. Did it leak worse when the car was running or did it matter? Um, it would leak when it was sitting. Definitely when, when it was just idle. Yeah, when it's, when, yeah it, it leaked out a little bit because uh, when I filled it up to get here, you know, get through. So we don't see any yeah, evidence my of a pipe leak there. None at all. However, at the corner of the timing belt cover, I see water there. So that's that, is that the water pump? And I spilled a little water, but I didn't spill any on the timing belt cover. So there shouldn't be any water there, and there is. So we're going to go ahead and pull the water pump, clean that off, reinstall it, and see if that fixes our leak. We're going to pull the timing belt and the water pump i took the computer out that makes it easier to get this thing here off makes it real easy to get this off so i put my tool into the serpentine belt i pinned it with one of those gold screws take the serpentine belt off get that out of the way and put my 12 millimeters on that i got the timing belt cover loose and Man, there's water in there on the water pump inside here. I'm going to check, make sure the bolts on the water pump are tight, and then I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Look what all this blue stuff is on the end of this timing belt. Never seen that before. The blue tooth timing belt. It appears that I'm about 180 degrees out on this timing belt deal. I had a mark there. And I got to line it up with that notch right there. So I need to turn that around. So let me go pull this skirt back and roll this around and get the timing on. Make sure it's on, on the crank because the crank is your focal point. Get it on the crank. Cam should be aligned. Then you could take the belt off. So let me work on that and go from there. Timing marks on this one is dead on. You see down there. The little nicks and the crank pulley on the oil pump nipple is mm -hmm. dead on. Mm -hmm. And then when you come up here, you see that mark is right in that nick. Mm -hmm. That mark is right in that nick. So mm -hmm. timing's right on spot, so we shouldn't have to mess with that. But I do need to get this tensioner off so I can get the water pump out, right. move the belt out of the way, and then remove the pump. This T45 down here is super tight. I tried to get it off with two tools. It really don't want to come off. I don't know if it's a little bit damaged or not. But I'm going to put the vice grips on the washer on the outside of it, the outside ring. And try to break it loose with that. And then turn it out. So I'm going to put these vice grips on there. and Hopefully I got a cheater bar around here somewhere I could put on the end of that. Maybe that jack handle. Here's a new one that he was not able to put on a couple months ago because he couldn't get that one off. But that's how I'm going to try to get that vice grip on there and break that loose. A lot of times when that bolt's too tight, it's leaning on that washer. And turning that washer a little bit counterclockwise will break the bolt loose. I got the vice grip on it. I'm going to put this cheater bar on it. And roll it counterclockwise. Hopefully it'll roll. And get that bolt loose all right let's see if it turned grab another bite it looked like it did turn not sure if it moved the screw or not but I'm gonna grab it again turn it I see a little shiny part on there I could mark it with a marker see if it turns but I'm gonna turn it a couple times with the vice grip and then try again with the T4 I did see the screw turn with it that time so it should be loose now. I should be able to get it out with my T45, baby. 
Well, look at here. I can turn it out with my finger now. That's what you call a 10% rule. You got to be 10% smarter than the piece of metal that's trying to defeat you. Now that we got the tensioner roller pulley out of the way, we're going to drop this camera down here and see if we can see where this pump is leaking water at. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Uh, not really. A little water down there. First, I'm going to see if these bolts are all tight, the right tightness. And then, if they are, I'm going to go ahead and pull it. Change the gasket, make sure the block's cleaned off, and then reset it. So far, I checked four of the water pump bolts. None of them was torqued tight enough. Now, it's hard to get a torque wrench on there, but since we're having a leak problem, I decided to do that. Look how loose that bolt is. It's nowhere near torqued tight. So I'm going to try to torque these bolts to the right torque spec. If you use a quarter inch, you could probably tighten it as tight as you can get with one hand with a quarter inch. But if you can get a torque wrench on here. So now I'm hitting here with the torque wrench. So what I want to do is I take this off because it's not going to let me position that over. I pull the tool off. I turn it one notch. I push it back on. Now I can put it back down there and get another bite on this hex bolt. So your tool is a square on your, on your torque wrench and your socket is a hex. So now I have a bite from here to here. See there? I'm still not torqued close. So I'm only getting these little bites and I got to pull the socket off, turn it. 90 degrees push it back on then I'll get another bite. I got to keep that going until I get that torqued You know, so it's awkward, but that's what you got to do to get these bolts torqued out, right? Took the two bolts out of this mount Put the jack under there with a piece of wood jacked up the oil pan. I got this bottom hole on the Block mount lined up with the top hole on the mount. I put the bolt back in now I can move that jack, but the engine's raised up about an inch. However, why that is, that gives me more access to that water pump stuff up there. Before I jacked that engine up, my tool was stuck. Now look how much space I got to get that tool out of there. Gives you a lot more space. Let me torque the rest of these bolts. I got three more to torque and make sure it's good to go. And then we're going to see if we got a leak or not. I see a lot of water on this edge right here. So I'm going to absorb all that water, dry that off, let it sit 15-20 minutes, see if water reaccumulates there. If so, I'm going to go ahead and pull the pump, see how clean the mating surface is. I really would rather fire this engine up and let this get heated up. See if this thing leaks. That's all water residue, so I can't tell if new water is crawling out of there or not. But let me go ahead and see if I got a clamp so I can redo this tensioner and get this tensioner on there, the belt back together, and fire this thing up. Let it run a few minutes, even though I got a dead battery over. We are still looking dry. So, let's go ahead and put this thing together. Now, you could put a piece of rubber silicone hose under the bottom of your crank to stop your crank from popping off of that gear down there under the belt and above the Dimple. Now he was checking on his CV boots and his boots are cracking. That one split right there. And it's a Volvo axle, so you want to keep these if all possible. And those are cracked there. These are manual axles. So you do want to keep those if you can. So probably gonna order some boots today and reboot those. He had his car sitting somewhere and somebody got under it and stole the cat. 
cut the cat right off, cut the two O2 sensors. So he had another cat put on and he's got a bung on it. So we're gonna put the front sensor in that bung. We need to get a bung in the back so we can put the rear O2 sensor in as well. Other than that, he's gonna have a check engine light forever. Found the hand grenade pin sitting on the lower control arm. <laughs> Turns out there's a lot of residue left on the water pump. He wasn't able to get the water pump surface clean. I don't tell people this, but I use a razor blade and he was trying to use other ways to get it clean. So I used a razor blade and shaved the old gasket off. The old gasket was still there. You see that little dot of red on top of that guide pin? I'm going to try to get that off of there. Everything else is smooth as a baby's bottom. It looks like there's a little scratch area there. I got to feel that. Make sure that feels real smooth there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's smooth. It's just a surface scratch. It's not a gouge in the, in the uh, engine surface. So, he's using water for... A month or two so you see that starting to build up there also inside the water pump this is a new water pump and man it don't take long for straight water to start rusting the stuff out so I encourage you guys to bite the bullet keep putting cooling in there till you get your leak sorted out I'm gonna clean this off with the wire brush go over that with the wire brush try to get the little piece off of there then we're gonna be ready to put this thing back on Put coolant in here. Stop this water leak. Got the gasket and everything cleaned up off of there. Brushed most of that rust off that I could. Not that much. And I don't think it's damaged anything in there. I wire brushed that. And you run your finger around there. Smooth as the baby's bottom. Ready for the next water pump and stuff. There's a little dot down there next to that guide pin. I'll make sure that that's smooth. And I'll wipe out that little dirt and... We'll get the coolant back in here. Gasket in place, ready to set the pump on and bolt that thing down. Couldn't get the screws in, the pump went on straight. So now I got it on the gap pins, now my holes are lined up. Let me screw it in. Since I was only dealing with the water pump, I took the timing belt, wrapped it around that cam, and put a little clip on it to hold it against that timing belt cover. Wasn't long enough to get over top of that without kind of putting a kink in it so I just clipped it like that hold it in place now I'm gonna put the hydraulic tensioner in then I'm gonna put the roller back in put the timing belt back on its proper path everything's on timing marks are on belts on ready to roll the owner went to go get the battery so his battery was actually bad three years old man if you don't treat a battery perfect it's only going to last three years if they sell you a three-year battery. Three years and two months. Shame. Treat them perfect. They might last four, but don't expect it. So you buy a five-year battery, expect it to last five years if you treat it right. That means driving somewhere nonstop for 30 minutes one day a week and trips in excess of 15 minutes. That battery will last as long as it's dated so let me torque this stuff down pour some coolant in here make sure we don't have anything leaking which we shouldn't we're gonna call it a day uh, the owner actually has some more parts he wants to order he wants to order the Volvo CV axle boots those are going to take two half days to get here tomorrow's Tuesday they'll probably get here Thursday so I got all day tomorrow and have today Thursday to pedal around. So we have a radiator hose here. Lower rad hose. I'm going to install that. I'm going to put these on when I do the axles. I'm probably not going to need this stuff. I'm going to change his throttle body cable. The coating come off of the cable. So he bought a new cable so he can get that done. Man, I can't get that to stay in there. And uh, so, cable is limp. 
it must be broke here at this yeah it's broke right there so we're going to replace this uh, cable for him there we'll do that tomorrow got an IPD rip kit boys and he's got a brand new battery his battery was bad I showed him how to put that battery clip in that's a video on its own so let me go in here and close this up and eat dinner and get ready for tomorrow if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website and if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them again thank you very much for watching